Hi, today we're going to connect a Ellen Bradley PLC to the new SIG 350. Using Studio 5000 version 32. So the first thing I need to do is go to the SIG USA website and download the EDS file for the SIG 350 and then commission it using the commissioning tool, the EDS commissioning tool that's embedded here in the Studio 5000 platform. I'm going to go ahead and download that file and then I will import it. So I will go ahead and create a little folder here and uh, save this file. Uh, let's call it ABPLC SIG 350. There we go. Then I'll go ahead and unzip the file, extract it to that same folder and we're done with that part of it. Now I just need to import it into the PLC environment using the EDS hardware installation tool. Let's go ahead and do that. Register an EDS file. Yes. Single file. Go ahead browse to the file. And next, 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 and now it should be in your database. So we'll be able to configure one within the PLC environment here, this project. Next thing I need to do is, I think I actually need to go offline and then configure the module in my IO tree over here on the left. So let's switch over to offline mode. And yeah, okay, I'm going to go here to Ethernet new module. And then search for the SIG. There it is. Create. And give it a name. Of course, we're going to need to know what the IP address of it is. This particular one, I'm not 100% sure, so I'm going to have to double check. But let's take a stab and say it's 192.168.1.56. Going to make a couple other changes here. Disable the keying. We'll open that constraint up. And then this particular unit should be exclusive owner 32 bytes. Yes. And OK, we'll save that configuration. Close out of here. The 6350 comes from the factory set with boot P active. So you can use a boot P tool to discover and set uh, the IP address uh, per the uh, MAC address of the device. Or, which is my case, the IP address has already been set to 192.168.1. And then the fourth octet is manually set using the pots there on the front. So if you know the subnet and you can dial in the IP address if you don't use the boot P tool. Those details are specified inside the instruction manual that's available for download as well on the sickusa.com website. I'm going to go ahead and try this boot P tool, see if it comes up with anything. My experience is that this occasionally works, but most of the time does not work. So I'm going to go ahead and X out of here. And instead, what I will do 
is take a look at trying to ping, making the assumption about the subnet here. It's either 0 or 1. So I will go ahead and set my subnet to 0 and ping the device with 56, 192, 168, 0.56, the IP address of my PLC is 192.168.1.20, so I want them to be on the same subnet. So the fact that it's not responding to the this, this ping is not a bad thing at the moment, because hopefully it once I change over, once I change my subnet back to one dot, like so. Ah, here we go. Nice. So as configured, I should be able to go online and pull up a live SIG 350. Let's go ahead and push this logic down with the new configuration. SIG 350's added. There we go. Looks like IO is okay, so that's a very good thing. So everything looks good up to this point. So regarding the settings for the module that I configured here, I can see that we've got a cent. So that should be changed to dent. And then I'm going to keep my exclusive owner 32. For the connection configuration and then just click OK. Want to change it? Yes. And then let's go ahead and apply that. OK. And let's try this again and see what we got. Go online. Download. Go back into the tag database. And I'm going to go to monitor mode in the data. And now here you can see that I do not have anything connected yet. So that's not obvious. It's not obvious, but I do not currently have anything connected to port 1 yet. So let me go ahead and connect a sensor to port 1 physically. The one that I'm going to be connecting is a WTT12 LC part number 1072532. If you're not familiar with that sensor, you can look it up on the sick.com website, sickusa.com, and then you can take a look at the, um, the documentation that describes the process data and figure out what data is coming into um, those the bytes. You see the, uh, the changing numbers there. That's going to be the process data coming into the SIG 350 for this sensor. For, for actually viewing this data for the first time, if you change the style of the data to hex, and then that sort of helps you understand how the process data is parsed out. So if, if we go to and take a look at the sensor live using the browser, you can see there the IP address. And then here's the SIG350. So I'm connected directly to the SIG350 over Ethernet. And you can see that there is an IO link device online at port 1. 
and in the pictorial there it's a nice solid green S1. So taking a look at some of the other settings, we don't currently need MQTT so I'm not going to bother with that. You can see the Ethernet configuration there on the right and um, some more information on the port 1. Class A port type, transmission rates COM2, maximum power you can put on that is 4 amps. Not going to be a problem for us at all with this particular input sensor, like 100 milliamps at max. So here we can actually drill into the device at port 1. You can see the WTT12, part number 1072532. And then you can see the received data on this side of the fence, so to speak, as well. And you can see the arrangement of the bytes differs a little bit from what we saw on the PLC. So hopefully you can unscramble the bytes and what they mean uh, using that reference document. We are not going to go into that here in this session today. I'm going to go ahead and s save this project so that I have it uh, for the future. Thanks for your time.